Hey everybody, Adam Savage here outside of my cave. In fact, I am in the back stacks of the Royal Society in London with Keith, the head librarian. How are you, sir? Hi there. Good, very good. Good to see you. Uh, and we have a remarkable, a remarkable object here. Will you tell us what this is? Uh, this is a model of the first reflecting telescope by Sir Isaac Newton. So it's the first surviving intact reflecting telescope, I should say. Yeah. And, and is this his drawing of the same? Uh, it's Henry Oldenburg. So this okay. is a, a little set of Newton correspondence. So this is the earliest set of letters that Newton wrote to the Royal Society in 1672. And this is when he's talking about his researches into light and colours. And one of the offshoots uh, of that research yeah. was a practical one. It's the, the telescope. And the, the big difference between this, as I understand it, was that magnification before this was going through lenses, looking all the way through the objective lenses. That's and exactly right, yes. Newton did the math and realized that there was going to be chromatic aberrations from that? That's exactly right, yes. And um, refracting instruments were pretty unwieldy at this, at this time. They're quite often called aerial telescopes. Uh, and uh, in order to, to get over that, that colour aberration problem, they had a, an object glass at the front end of the telescope, right. which might be attached to a building or to a mast, and you'd stand 100 feet, 200 feet behind it with a, with an eyepiece and, and try to grab an observation that way. And you can imagine it at night, uh, if it's a bit windy, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you're, not, you're not really going to have much of a chance there. So very, very difficult. Uh, and this may, must have made quite an impression. I mean, this is just a tabletop model, yeah. but at the same time, having something so compact when those bigger instruments are so unwieldy is, is quite a step change. And we are still using this telescope design today. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, there are various designs of reflecting telescope. Hadley did one of them. Newton's is probably the simplest. So you just got a, a curved mirror at the back here. One of these guys. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, and the light is concentrated to a particular point here. You can look through the eyepiece, which if I just turn this, you can see here. And there's a second mirror inside. Oh, a 40, at a 45 degree Exactly, angle. that just takes the light into a place where you can see it. Uh, and, and it's very obvious in, in the drawing oh, here, the where eye. you can see the little eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this means that there will always, there's a little stalk or sometimes three stalks that hold that reflecting mirror Exactly, yes. It's just, just one stalk on this one. You can probably just see May it I if I turn there. Yeah, I do. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Now, I should say that the model has been adapted, conserved, messed around with over the years. I with mean, different philosophies about what conservation was? At the that's right. It, it, it passed out. Uh, well, the, the Royal Society had one of these models. We don't quite know which one it was. And uh, this was retrieved uh, in a shop in London oh. in the 18th century. Uh, restored at the time, and 18th century restoration was... <clears throat> pretty hands-on. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and over the years, of course, it's been, it's been looked at, handled, uh, repaired. Well, I'd like and, to talk about that for a second, because yeah. when you say that their ideas of archivism were different, uh, today we attempt to preserve objects in the state they are at. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Whereas this one was reconstructed in the state that they thought it should have been when it was new. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, uh, we're never quite sure which are original fittings and original pieces uh, and which were replaced in the 18th century. I mean, not too far from, from Newton's death. But you can see some obvious differences straight away. In the drawing, you can see there's no real eyepiece right, the there. Lens or, or there. if there is a lens, it's, it's a very tiny one in the body of the instrument, whereas mm -hmm. this has been retrofitted with something quite different. So th there are clearly differences. Um, but uh, on the whole, it doesn't look too dissimilar, whether no. that's an 18th century gentleman making sure that it didn't, or, <laughs> or whether there are, there are enough pieces here. Uh, we don't know for sure. 
It looks almost as if these are two cardboard tubes or paper. They are, tubes. yeah. They're, they're essentially cardboard, which uh, you can probably see here. This one's got a, a covering of vellum, ah. and that presumably just makes it easier to, to slide in a and bearing out. surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious about what looks like here a second lens hole. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, whether that has been reversed, whether mm -hmm, the tube mm -hmm. has been turned around and that's been plugged, or whether at some point it's had another lens there, again, lost in the in the mists of time. It it feels to me, as I look at it, that this tailpiece, that mm. little wing nut, looks yeah. quite authentic. Yeah, <laughs> it, um, feels... it, it, it looks <laughs> authentic, but as you know from what, the film industry, yes, uh, yeah. what looks authentic is not necessarily the case. Um, I'm also curious about the uh, the ground mirror here. Is mm. this contem uh, contemporaneous with the with the telescope? Uh, we we think it is. Yeah. So the Royal Society had a whole collection of these uh, mirrors at one point. The Royal Society had a, a museum collection uh, which included instruments, uh, and it does note several uh, uh, object uh, glasses and uh, telescope mirrors in there. And we can see it's been attached at some point. It's got mm -hmm. a bit of sealing wax here, and yeah. it's got some kind of fitting there, which presumably presumably uh, goes in the back. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's an authentic piece from late 17th, early 18th century. And do you, what is this made out of? Uh, that would be speculum metal. So Newton invented his own alloy oh. uh, in order to, to be able to construct the mirror better. Something that would be stable under That's multiple right. temperatures. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And uh, it would be silvered, of course, so you could, you could see what was going on. Uh, but it just shows you that um, Newton was quite hands-on. I mean, we tend to think of him as a very cerebral figure. Yeah. Um, and we know from his alchemical interests that he could handle metals, that he could cast things himself. So uh, um, potentially, uh, this is this is uh, along those lines. Amazing. Um, I'm curious, as he is there a documentation about the grinding of the lens? Um, uh, not so much from that period. He he does talk a little bit of how these things are made, mm -hmm. um, but the. The proof is in the actual instrument. He presented right. one of these to the Royal Society so that the fellows in their meetings could take a look at it, play around with it, right. see how it worked. Yeah. And it's that practical demonstration that's the key thing. Well, and they were no strangers to glass lenses at that point. So the, the mathematics right. and techniques of grinding lenses to extremely fine reflective surfaces was a known was a known thing. It was, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's amazing when you look at some object glasses from that period, and we do have a few if you'd like to see one in the collections, uh, where they're, they're full of inclusions and bubbles that they're, they're almost flat. Uh, wow. You know, that, that it it doesn't quite look like a lens somehow. Yeah. It looks like just like a sheet of glass. Um, so uh, they're, they're very different, but glass working was uh, something that in the 17th century that they got very good at very quickly. Um, so on the opposite extreme you have Anthony van Leeuwenhoek making microscope lenses, yeah. and those were astonishingly powerful for, yeah. for single lens instruments of the period, right down to getting to, to kind of bacterial level. Well, and so much so, they were secreted for a yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. So a lot of processes uh, at the period were kept secret. Uh, in the guilds, as it were? Yeah, well, partly, but, but also because people thought that they could make some money from sure, these things. Sure, sure. Uh, but if you were a gentleman of science, of course, you, you, were, you were above that. So you, you, you just allowed the things out into the world. Um, I'm curious about uh, the eyes you have for this, because I look at it and I, I see an object of, with various aspects to it. But I'm curious where you have looked at so many of these objects and artifacts and talked about them and, and archived them. What is fascinating to you about this object? Uh, it's it's just it's slightly counterintuitive, I think, because I I think of telescopes as, of, of having really substantial mounts and yeah. they're stable yeah. instruments, and you can look at the stars and you know you know what the positions are. Uh, this is this is ball and socket joint. Yeah. You know, you can you yeah. can you can very happily swivel this in in any direction. And it's just um, the pressure of these two pads that exactly right allow and, that ball to move into any position. Because it's a very highly polished ball, mm -hmm. uh, it it does actually work, and it will it will stay in one position. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, of astronomy, it is very much a model. It's not going to be an instrument that you can use for, for any 
long-term substantial uh, observations. So is it reasonable to say that this was the, a demonstration model of the possibilities of a telescope? Yes, I think that's exactly right. So what, what he's doing is showing you how one of these things work. And, and it should be obvious, therefore, what the practical applications are that's, that's, on a larger scale. That's very satisfying to me. I mean, I, I built one of these 20 years ago as an educational model. And I remember as I completed it thinking, a real one can't look like this. Yeah. But the real one is an educational model. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it, it's a demonstration piece so that a group of Royal Society fellows gathered around a table in a meeting could examine it. Uh, it's not something where they had to run outside and look at a 200 footer. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that they could see how it worked uh, and point it out of a window and just, just see what kind of magnification right. you could get. I mean, and in this palace devoted to spreading knowledge and storing it and disseminating it, this is this is a wonderful demonstration of exactly that. Yeah. Keith, thank you so much. What a thrilling You're most welcome. dive back into time. I really appreciate yeah. it.